All right, this is our prediction. This is the bunch. Of, okay. All right, this is the <laughs> bunch of Podhead podcast prediction video for the WWE pay per view Hell in a Cell. We're gonna go through the card, including the the one match we know of on the kickoff show. Yeah. Uh, and give our predictions. I don't know if there's any more matches on the kickoff show, but so far we're starting with Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin versus the Hype Bros. Now. Now I'm I, before we start. I need to go ahead and make it known that I, I'm not sure what the. I mean, I know what the card is, but yeah. I was completely unaware of most of the matches until just now. Like I knew so about the I. Charlotte Flair and Natalia. I knew about Shane and Kevin Owens, and I knew about Jinder and Nakamura. Yes, every other match I was completely unaware of. Yeah, I, didn't, I think I, I probably knew about the tag match too. I think I knew about. I want to say I knew about the tag team match, but I didn't know it was on Hell in the Cell. Just because lately. Everybody, like all the storylines that were going on, somebody got hurt, so now they're kind of like yeah. over for yeah. the for the moment. And lately, I've been a little uh, kind of not as present. Like it'll be on, but I'll only catch what I want to catch. See, I've I've been watching like the highlights. Like YouTube's been keeping me up on Raw and SmackDown. I've been watching NXT, so I know everything okay. about NXT. I know like War Games is coming, and like fucking all this crazy shits coming for the network. But wrestling, like I'm oblivious to what's going on besides the reviews and keeping up with the game and stuff yeah. like that to yeah. know what's happening so i know what's going on right now i know basic story but like i haven't actually been there to develop with these storylines gotcha See, yeah for, like the filler stuff for me it's more like smackdown comes on and something's happening i'm like oh yeah i forgot that happened last week or oh yeah i, I kind of remember picking up on that a little bit because I'll, I'll be sitting here like doing editing or yeah. fucking with something on the computer and it's on you know okay I mean? so especially raw because raw is fucking long as shit it is dude three hours like it, it doesn't need to be that long no that's actually why they said they put the uh, enzo stuff at the end the cruiserweight the 205 stuff for the last hour that's the most interesting one of the more interesting things on raw lately yep and see that's another thing like enzo Which is weird is getting so much flack. Like it, it's a it's a toss up between people that like him and see. I'm not there to build with Enzo, so like I don't know what side I should be on. Should I like that Enzo's the champion or be disappointed that Neville lost it to Enzo in the way he did? Well, apparently Enzo's a heel now. Yeah, I like mean, out of like, nowhere he was just like I'm gonna be an asshole tonight, and he and he was being a heel well, without you... ever really make taking a heel turn. It's yeah. just like I became the champ now. I'm cocky and I'm gonna be a bad guy. And he pretty much took the. Uh, turn on the talking sm the after the show, whatever talking raw or sm talking smack, whatever it was when he was oh, like, see, I'm gonna that. throw this title wherever I go because it's ugly as hell. Okay, he's I didn't like, see that. until they put a uh, cheetah print and a Gucci label on here, I'm just gonna throw it all over the place. So he doesn't even take the 205 live seriously. All right, see, I don't watch 205 live. See, I don't either. I guess I didn't think about the fact that he's on 205 live. So if he had a heel turn, it was probably on 205 live. Yeah. Okay. Which I have the network, Which I think he had the and I still never watch. I don't really even know if he's on the actual show, 205 Live. Like, 205 Live consists of Shelton Benjamin, Brian Kendrick, like, all those guys. Like, I, I haven't even seen updated stuff until I watched the game. Like, the game entrances. I'm like, oh, that's what Shelton Benjamin looks like now. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I haven't seen these guys in years. Well, we're, we are definitely getting off the subject. We're getting way this off. is all Monday Night Raw shit. Which yeah. is my fault because I brought up how long money. Yeah, ride. this is a SmackDown thing. So in the in the kickoff show, who do you who do you's gonna win? The Hype Bros or Shelton Benjamin well, and Chad Gable? Because it's Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin versus the Hype Bros in the kickoff. Yeah, match. I guess. Um, this is one of those ones that I kind of I completely forgot about. Yeah. Uh, when it comes down to it, I'm probably gonna go Hype Bros just because they start to get pushes and never get anywhere. Okay. Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin are basically a brand new tag team. They are. So Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go hype bros on this one. Alright. I'm gonna go there. But Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin won just because it would be such it'd be one of those things that they do that pisses me off, and they do that a lot. Yeah. Like just choices they make that I'm just like, why are you pushing them? And that's why I'm going with Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin All because right. they are so new that I believe that they're going to, with that push behind, um, what's his name on, on Raw? 
the Chad Gable's original partner. Oh, Jason Jordan. Okay, Jason Jordan. See, that's another thing. With that... the push separate from that, like they're giving a push to Shelton Benjamin coming back and pushing Chad Gable in the form. I think they're going to become SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I got gotcha. you. Going forward with this. I got gotcha. you. I could see that happening. All right. Well, that and I think sense. that's why they broke them up. Oh, really? Like the, the Chad Gable, and sh- because they needed Shelton Benjamin to come back, and it was always a and rumor they were, that they, they were, were going to join Team Alpha. And they were repping Shelton Benjamin for a while before. They were. Before he ever came back, and they never said anything about him being a tag team contender. No. But uh, they do need more tag teams. Yes. Oh, my God. They oh. Just like they need more good women's wrestlers. Because yes. after a while, you can only watch the same five women that especially when they're doing like fatal five weights and shit all the time yeah like, when they're all in the match like i didn't even know natalia was the champion until i looked up this review thing like yeah it's she, that bad and she won it from naomi naomi had it what since wrestlemania yeah naomi held it for a while. yeah she had the glow title it was so long that she customized it with a glow like an actual yeah. like stupid little she got thing her own custom it. belt yeah. and so on so what are we going to go off with the next match so okay bill just uh just to specify one more time. Yes, yeah, got spec- okay. Chad Gable. I got Chad Gable and Shelton, and Shelton Benjamin. Benjamin. I have the hype bros. Okay. All right. Yeah, I wrote that down. That's... Well, I was doing it for the audience. You know? Okay, yeah, for sure. Uh, next match is Randy Orton versus Rusev. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, if that's not the next match, this is at least our prediction for it. Yeah. Um, I don't think they... they we're basing this the on actual... the WWE website. So if we're out of order, WWE's out of order. Yeah. You're all out of order. You're all out of order. Um, But yes, Randy Orton versus Rusev. This is just a grudge match, right? Yes, I believe this is just a match because I think Randy Orton came out and attacked Rusev a couple months ago yeah. and they had a match that Randy Orton beat. It was like a squash match. He beat him in like 10 seconds with the RKO. Rusev was out there and he was doing this. Spun him around, RKO him. No, I, I saw that. I know it's... Uh... It's been something that's building. I just didn't know if there was some sort of stipulation involved or some weird. As far as I know, it's just a match, like weird literally match. a grudge match. Yeah, like there's no no hold bar, just no a feud. nothing cool. Just a yeah, yeah, just a regular. Right together real quick. Yep. All right. Well, who do you got on this one then, sir? I have Rusev because Rusev is on a losing streak. And Rusev lost to John Cena in the flag match. He lost to Randy Orton after t- 10 seconds. So unless they're burying Rusev and Rusev's going to Ring of Honor or TNA, Rusev's going to win this match and start to make a comeback because there's, I'll talk about it later, but there's some rumor going later on in the future that stuff's going to change up. Like They're going to do like another superstar shakeup? Not thing. like a superstar shakeup, but like somebody got pulled from Survivor Series and someone got added to Survivor Series. So they're going to pull the Royal Roma match early. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's weird. We're going to be on the same page on this one because I was going to say Rusev as well because he just came back. Okay. Um, I don't. He did know. just come back, didn't he? Yeah, just recently. Like, he came back and started this feud with Randy Orton, I think. Um, not only that, I fucking love Rusev. So do I. He's good. He's underused. He's underrated. And, like, he just seems like an awesome dude in real life. Like... He's got a hot ass girl, which <laughs> right? now they're they're almost acting like they're not together at all. They're completely separate from each other. You never see them together, even though they are together in real life. And Did you see his Twitter page? Like his uh, picture that he tweeted out with Lana. They're sitting there, and she's got a beer, and he's sitting on his riding lawnmower, and she's got like a push lawnmower, and they're both holding a beer, just like in the front of his lawn, and he's just American as hell with no shirt <laughs> on, khaki shorts, That's and she's awesome. just sitting there with that whatever cut T shirt you had on. And he's just like, he, he like said something, and I was like, oh, this is great. This no, is total Russo. That's fucking awesome. But even there for a while, like right before they did that split, and he kind of, I don't know if he got injured or what, but they both kind of left for a while. And then she came back and was doing her like solo, like actually wrestling and shit. Yeah. But he, um, before they started doing all that, and they were still together and on doing things together, like right after they got married, like, Rusev was starting to become more comedic. Yes. And, like, he just came off as just, like, such a, like, <laughs> big, sweet dude, which he totally did. killed the the whole Bulgarian brute. 
thing. They, when he but cut his it hair, it was just so likable. Yes, when they cut his hair, when he cut his hair, they actually had handsome Rusev chants. Like, and, the, and there was at one point he was talking about him and him and Lana like doing it, but he didn't actually say <laughs> doing it. But like, and he's holding her hand and he's like swinging back and forth a little bit, and he's just like, it was just so like silly and it was just, awesome. That's hilarious. I laughed my ass off. But this for me, my and I like Randy Orton too. He's good at what he does. Yes. Just, He's well, Randy always, Orton's a good guy right now. He's always, yeah, and he and he's always pushed. Like he always yeah. gets a push. He's always, everybody loves him. So, I, I, this is all personal, personally motivated for me. Yeah, same here. It's, it's all based. Just I just like Rusev, and I want Rusev to do well. Yeah, I hated Rusev before, and now really? even though he's lost matches, I still like him. It's kind of like Bray Wyatt. Like Bray Wyatt loses and loses and loses, but I still like him. Yeah. Like it's just like his character. Like Rusev is. Our Iron Sheik. Like, everybody loved to hate Iron Sheik back no. in the day. Like, uh, Bray Wyatt gets a bad rap, and he doesn't get... He, he was pushed there for a little bit, but he lost it. Yeah. Um, But I just... I, I've always liked his character. Even when he first came out and people were, like, shitting all over him. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was always like, what do you mean? This is, like, one of the most original... Ty- I mean, yeah, he kind of copies The Undertaker, and he kind of copies this person. A little but, bit. like, you haven't seen anything like this this well done in a long time no and he's pulling it off and he does it well dude and he, his music was fantastic. his promos get better and better like he's got all the mannerisms and fucking laughs down and everything he does it like he's an actor yep, this dude could is. act in a movie and do pretty well yeah he could do a sister abigail movie but yeah again rusev rusev R- rusev definitely. both got rusev on this one um Stupid fucking ad! I can't. I wanted to go away, but it yeah, won't. they don't have a little X on it. We're but seeing, next, oh, there it goes. next match is sure. Bobby Roode versus Dolph Ziggler, which is another match that kind of just got thrown in there out of nowhere. Which is probably why it was pretty. It wasn't very memorable. Yeah. It didn't stick out to me, or like I didn't remember, you know. But uh, I think the obvious choice here, and we're probably going to be on the same page here, and it's probably going to be personally motivated again but bobby Roode. oh of course who doesn't want bobby like dolph ziggler although i do like his gimmick lately of stealing other gimmicks it is funny most of the time yeah his shane mcmahon was good his uh one where he actually tricked people into thinking someone was coming back uh who was that where he came out at, like someone's entrance and everybody like popped but they kind of knew it was going to be dolph ziggler well yeah yeah He's done that a few times. Undertaker. He did the Undertaker entrance. Yeah. And everybody knew. They kind of knew it was going to be Ziggler and Undertaker wasn't coming back. But then when he came out, he did, he does such a good job. And Bobby Roode took offense to that because Bobby Roode, like, there was some kind of thing that where in the back they were talking about changing his, his gimmick. They were taking away Glorious and putting it to something else. Yeah, that would be so dumb. Oh, my God. It would be terrible. But they decided not to. They decided not to give him the Shinsuke Nakamura treatment to where he's like the artist known as Shinsuke and like they got to force you to think of him as Michael Jackson and like just we know like we already know. Yeah, like, they're, I, they came out of nowhere. <laughs> yes. But they're really pushing that artist known as shit. Like, yeah, they are. Like we all know him as the King of Song, Strong Style Shinsuke Nakamura from NXT. Yep. We've been watching him since he got there. We've been loving him since he got there. Why the fuck would you just change that all of a yeah. sudden when he's about to debut on the main roster? Right. Like, you know it's successful. Why? Like, that's just the dumb shit that pisses me off about WWE. And that's what they were going to do to Bobby Roode. I don't know. They never said what they were going to change it to, but he kept the glorious image. And him and Ziggler, that's what started this, is <laughs> uh, Bobby Roode, I guess Ziggler said something about, like, or Bobby Roode said, I don't have to steal other people's injuries, and Ziggler made some kind of comment about it. And that's why this feud, this is basically just another grudge match, just like Rusev and Randy Orton. This That's is just loosely another, based on an actual event. Loosely based on an actual event, yes. Gotcha. Because WWE is seeming to do more realistic stuff, like with Roman Reigns and John Cena when they were like, you're the untouchable, and you're the one that is just pushed down everybody's throats. And then they're doing the same thing with this. Just behind, They're trying to bring you more behind the scenes and tell you, like, we're listening to you, kind of, but we're still going to give you what we want to. Like, this match, this match really makes no sense. Like, for a Hell in the Cell... Like Dolph Ziggler versus Bobby Roode, I feel like they were just filling the match card with these last two matches. Yeah, yeah. Like they needed some stuff. Yeah, like they needed something, and they were like, shit. "Well, we got we got Bobby Roode. We're not using him right now. He's not the champion because Bobby Roode to me is Ric Flair. Bobby oh, Roode yeah. could be the seventeen, he's, eighteen he's time a, champion. He's a tamer, and a, not that Ric Flair isn't cool, but he's a yeah. tamer, more cooler 
Ric Flair. Yeah. And by cool, I mean like that like stereotypical like I've got like good looking. Yes. I'm a I'm cool kind of guy. And this is the best character he's done. I mean, he's done Beer Money in TNA, which was cool. He did the breakup of Beer Money, which was okay. But this glorious act has been the best because he goes out there on NXT. I watch all his matches. He beats everybody. When he had that Drew McIntyre match, they destroyed each other. Yeah. And Drew McIntyre legitimately beat him. Bobby Roode didn't need anybody to come out and beat anybody for him. Bobby Roode and Drew McIntyre just had a match. And every match that Bobby Roode had, he gave that like heel, like he did something to win, but he still... Oh, had yeah. to pin him one, two, three. There was no one else that came out and distracted him or anything. He still had to pin the guy. Yeah, yeah, and, and, that's why and I, he did it, and he does it all extremely well. Yep, he pulls it off. And with the rumor of Dolph Ziggler leaving, Dolph Ziggler loses tonight. Bobby Roode gets it. Yeah, I think Bobby Roode all the way. Not only that, but lately, all Dolph Ziggler really is is a guy used to put people over. Yeah. That's why that's that's exactly what he is, and he, and he knows that. I'm pretty sure he's fully aware of that. He's right a now. professional jobber. I mean, this guy was a world, like I think, a multiple time world champion, if not maybe just one time, yeah. but at least twice, I would think. I like Dolph Ziggler, unless he's going to rebuild his character. So two matches in a row, we're both going Bobby Roode. Yep, or we're both going the, going same, the same. And on yeah. this one, we're going Bobby Roode. All right, next match: United States Championship match: AJ Styles versus Baron Corbin. Um, what do you think, sir? <laughs> this is a Hell in a Cell match, right? Um, this so. is no. Nah, I don't think this is a Hell in a Cell. Does it say at the bottom? Uh, no, this no is short skirts here. Baron Corbin will collide with AJ Styles at WWE Hell in a Cell for the United States title. Yeah, no, it's not a Hell in a Cell. I don't think so. Um, right. so this... we might be wrong. We'll look like assholes tomorrow. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen because AJ Styles versus Baron Corbin, why? Baron Corbin came out and tried to cash in his money in the bank and lost. Baron Corbin went through that feud with John Cena and lost. Now, Baron Corbin, if he doesn't win against AJ Styles, he just continues to get buried Yeah. from here on out. There's no way to bring Baron Corbin's character back. You let him win the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, and then the next year you shit on the Andre the Giant Battle Royal by letting Mojo Raleigh win it. Yep. And making no sense. Just like when they crapped on the Intercontinental title and let um, uh, Zack Ryder win it. Well, they, they also made him blow his money in the bank opportunity. Yeah. Cash it in and blew it. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're, sh- they're shitting all over him right now. They are. And I feel like unless Baron Corbin's going to win for some reason and age... Because this could be um, something like a one-off. Like, this could be the future to where... Shinsuke and AJ are next. Mm. But if Shinsuke loses tonight, AJ wins. Not saying Shinsuke, that's not my prediction for that, but AJ wins tonight, or AJ loses, it sets up storyline for later. So I'm going to go with... Well, okay. Go ahead, sorry. Okay, I'm going to go with um, they continue the storyline and Baron Corbin wins. Wow, all That's right. a curveball. So you're going for Baron Corbin on this one? I'm going for Baron Corbin on this one. See, I wouldn't be surprised if Baron Corbin won. Just because he's Just, he's lost so much. Yeah, not a, yeah because they've been shitting on him so much lately that he, he's probably kind of paid his dues, and maybe he'll win the U.S. title now. Yeah. Not only that, but it's been a storyline now where he was trying to be the fucking open challenge guy or whatever. He put a, AJ Styles at the open challenge, and he was trying to enter it, and people would do it before him, or Shane would fuck him out of it or something. Anyway... It would just make sense for him to finally get a payoff right now. To, yes, to finally get a payoff right now, it would. So I would, I would tend to lean towards Baron Corbin myself. Okay, but AJ Styles is my boy. <laughs> I knew and you were I gonna pick always AJ. fucking root for AJ. Oh yeah. So I'm, and I'm not gonna stop now. You Definitely, know what I mean? You can't. I mean, so I'll probably lose this one. Chances are I'll lose this one, but I'm, I mean, I'm gonna go AJ Styles. It's up in the air either way because, like I said, the only reason I'm picking Corbin is for later storyline. Oh. Is AJ because the uh, no your 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 theory your idea and thinking is yeah definitely makes sense yeah because of the whole Kenny Omega thing and being the United States champion and Shinsuke and AJ being the big American fight and Kenny Omega and whoever he Okada being the big Japanese fight so it's like just it's old WCW stuff it's like when Monday Night Wars was going on but they're like doing it more behind the scenes they're not like pushing it out to you they're 
just putting little matches, like little conspiracy theory matches in there. Boom. Hey, uh, Yeah. There'll All be right. conspiracy so, theory matches. I'm going, I'm going with, I'm going with the faithful choice and being an AJ Styles guy like usual, and you're going Baron Corbin. Yep. Soccer mom. Next match, SmackDown Tag Team title match, the New Day versus the Usos, Hell in a Cell match. Okay. This is going to be sweet. This is going to be sweet as a hell in the cell because they both these teams are high flyers and yeah. they're both good. They're both good. Oh yeah, I've I love the new USO gimmick. I hated the old no. USO gimmick. I mean, I like the old USO gimmick for a while. They're yeah. they're they're doing a lot more with this. Is yes. what I like about it. Yeah, they definitely are. But I liked the face paint and the the like tribal get up kind of like it wasn't really tribal, but it was they had like the. Like stuff like knights wear that hang down over their shorts and stuff. And oh like yeah, their, like their that logos little, and yeah, symbols that and guard shit. Or whatever stuff thing. like that looked cool. Like a Samoan warrior or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Like they had that warrior look. Then they were wearing their war paint and shit. I dug that. Like yeah. Now this is kind of a weird feud too because they lost and then won a following week and then lost again. Yep. So this is going in. Do the Usos win again? Then why did, the, did you give the New Day the titles in the first place? Is, feud, I is guess. that for yeah feud purposes? Uh, I, I mean, who knows? That's probably what we'll find out. But uh, and good, didn't that's a good question? Didn't uh, um, Kofi Kingston and Biggie just come back from injury, or Xavier or one of them? Didn't they just come back from injury? Uh, yeah, but I think it was Kofi Kingston and Big E. But I think they both came around like right around the same time okay came back so who's gonna be it we looks didn't see like new day e for a while they were all gone for a minute but yeah it looks like biggie and xavier are gonna do the match so in that and that saying that i'm gonna go with the uh, new day if it's biggie and xavier i'm going with the new day okay um i'm gonna go i want new day to win but i think that the usos are gonna win okay Good choice, good choice. Um, just because I think they're going to want to continue this feud on. And I think if the Usos lose now, legitimately, they're they're going to have no reason. They're, they're going to have to give somebody else a shot at the title. Okay. Could this be possible uh, Authors of Pain? I didn't think about that. But Coming that, out? Like, maybe. Being that it's a hell in the cell, could this be like... Could the I doubt of- authors of pain are coming so soon, though. Yeah, true. So that's yeah, maybe not for that reason, but yeah. I, I don't know. I just I get the feeling Usos are going to come out on top on this one. Do you feel? Eh, that also depends on if if it is uh, Big E, yeah, and Xavier Woods. Is Kofi going to be out there with them? You know True. I mean? Has Kofi even been on so TV gonna be some since he's are come they gonna, back? Because they've been known to pull some heel moves from time to time to win. Yeah. And still be faces. Yes, correct. And so, if the Usos try to pull off a heel move. The odds are in New Day's favor. But I, I just get a feeling the Usos are going to come out on top. Okay. Maybe. I don't have any real reason Maybe to possible uh, third Uso member. Something something special. Doubtful. Lead, leading into the future. Doubtful. Okay. okay. Most of the time, when I think there's gonna be a surprise ending or somebody's gonna or something's gonna happen, yeah. it doesn't. Okay. So maybe okay. it will. Now that I'm doubting it. You know so just I mean? a straightforward match then. Hell in the cell. I, got I don't the know. Like day. I said, I don't know about straightforward. Well, yeah, not maybe not so much straightforward, but you're not saying like any crazy like appearances. The and stuff, Usos is what could I definitely fight dirty, but that would make sense because they're heels. Yeah. Now, but if New Day wins with a heel move, that's kind of a wild card. You know what I mean? Yeah. True. That was hard to judge because they do that sometimes. They definitely do. Okay. So this is a hard one because it's it's almost like heels going against tweeners because they're not really faces if they're pulling heel moves. You know what I mean? They're kind of they're dirty. The yeah, new day they they, they like fight a, dirty sometimes. They do like a comedic style fighting, more like if we pull a heel move off, it's more for the fans. Like we didn't actually like. Or no, they'll just they'll just. It wouldn't even be really for fit because they'll do it right there in front of the camera. The ref just didn't see it. Yeah, you're and that's why they that. won. You know what I mean? Like it's not. It's not like they're trying to hide it or be funny. Like they're trying to save their asses, which makes sense. I'm not judging them. I'm just saying like it's hard to call yourself a face when you're doing heel moves. You True. know what I mean? True. Your camera went black. I wonder when. 
just like uh, when you were right before you were talking about doing heel moves and stuff. Oh, battery died? Are you kidding me? Forgot what I was saying last, but we had some fucking technical difficulties there for a <laughs> yeah, second, we but did. we're back. I guess we'll just wrap that one up and say that I'm going with the Usos. And I'm going with the New Day. And you're going with the New Day. Next match is SmackDown Women's title match, Natalia versus Charlotte Flair. Natalia versus Charlotte Flair is only happening because Ric Flair almost died. I don't know why Charlotte has boosted straight to the SmackDown women's title <coughs> unless they're trying to speed her title runs up to where she gets the title more often and be more Ric Flair esque or I guess like a like a Ric Flair tribute so he can't, cuz he can't be there but Charlotte is. Okay. I yeah. didn't I didn't factor in the whole Ric Flair thing. I didn't yeah. think about that at all. I didn't even they didn't even know Charlotte was going to wrestle this long originally. She was talking about retiring. Yeah, she was only this. she was doing it for her brother. So, yeah, like in memory of her brother. So there's still a possibility that they're giving their title as many times as possibly before she leaves, because she's that big draw card. That that could be like I was going to say Charlotte anyway because I want Charlotte to win. Yeah. Although it would make sense for Natalia to win considering she just got the well, title. That's yeah. That's what I'm actually going with. I'm going to go with um, Natalia actually winning this. Only if, With everything I said, that this being a tribute to Ric Flair, they still are going to do the Four Horsewomen storyline, too. Yeah, with the UFC girls. So if Charlotte wins the title, why would you bring the title into a tag match? That's true. Unless Ronda Rousey is going to win the title at WrestleMania, and it's going to be a big Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey deal. Yeah, well, that could be. I'm thinking Charlotte... Because I like Charlotte, really, is my only reason I want Charlotte to win. <laughs> I love Charlotte. Charlotte and Becky are my girls. Okay. But uh, Charlotte's a face pretty much these days, too. She's she a is. good guy now. Natalia's definitely a, a heel. Uh, but the, the Ric Flair thing is a good point. Like, maybe it's what you said, or maybe it's like, may, maybe she wants... Maybe it's something they talked about. Like, look, I want my dad to see me win both titles. You know, because he did just almost die. True. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe I want one more big celebration with my dad. You know what I mean? Maybe. And what better way to do it than a heart versus a flare? Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe they'll get involved somehow in the end. That would be Maybe cool. this will be an ongoing feud or whatever. Like Natalia does something. Like she says something about flare and Bret Hart shows up and like... Something crazy. Like, I don't obviously, think, they're I don't not think Rick wrestle Flair, each other. Yeah, I don't think Ric Flair's going to show up anytime soon. Maybe he'll shoot like a video or something. Yeah, he'll show it on the Titan. Yeah, he's been uh, shooting a lot of crazy videos on his Facebook. But uh, yeah, I'm going to say Charlotte. Okay, I'm going to say Natalia. Cool. 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 It's always good to be on the opposite sides. It is. Um, WWE Championship: Jinder Mahal versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Now it doesn't say it's a Hell in a Cell match. It doesn't. I thought it was. I thought it was, too. I put singles match down, so I don't think it's a Hell in a Cell. So maybe it is a singles match. Hail. Hail. Well, Hell in a Cell match still is a singles match. Now, is this not... the third time they're fighting, or is this the second time they're fighting? Because Shinsuke... I think, technically, it's the third time they're supposed to be fighting, but one of the times was, like, interrupted and, like, gender was disqualified or something. You know okay. what I mean? I can't remember quite much, but I love Shinsuke Nakamura, and I kind of dig this feud... A little bit, just because of uh, all the kind of racist things Jinder Mahal was saying <laughs> about, and like, yeah, uh, like it was just entertaining. You it know, was. What I mean? when it's for entertainment purposes, racism is kind of passable. Just kind of like when you make jokes about racism as a comedian, like, yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah, exactly. Is to make fun of things. It's to you know push I mean? the push the push the little lim push the limit. Not only that, I mean, it's kind of hard to call an Indian guy racist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but, I mean, I, anybody's capable of racism. I don't want to get on racism. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, it was funny, even if it was racist. Um, but, as much as I want Shinsuke Nakamura to win, don't think he's going to. You don't I'm think Shinsuke's going to win? No. That's, that's moving way too fast for him. All of a sudden, he's the champ. You know what I mean? He just got here, what, two months ago? Three months ago? Yep. Um, 
I- I'm sick of people coming in and just becoming the champ three months in. Like, win the U.S. To make your way up like like the good old days. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's ba- He was basically a minor leaguer. Yeah, he was the top minor leaguer for a long time. But it's like somebody coming into the MLB being made captain of the uh, the rookie year being made captain of the team and being the highest paid guy on the fucking team you know what i mean or like and being this i guess that's kind of a bad example because if you're accomplishing all that and you're a rookie you probably worked your ass off but i'm saying like way too much of a push way quick i w- i would much rather see him have like a fucking slower rise that has a lot more meaning to it you know what I mean? I agree. Not only that, but they just love pissing you off with Jinder Mahal. Yes. They love it. So They do. What better way to have him win yet again against one of the most beloved dudes on the roster? Could almost be called the face of SmackDown, Shinsuke. If he took the title, he could be called the face of SmackDown yeah, I as like of the... right now. But like you said, I agree with what you said. <clears throat> it's too much of a push. He needs to build his way. Yes, he built his way through NXT, and he was the NXT champion, but that's why he got brought up to the big leagues. When you go from college college football to professional football, those guys are like 50 pounds bigger than you. Yeah, It's like getting hit for the first time. Yeah, That's what's, that's how I look at it with this. I agree with you. Gender wins. Yeah. Because gender is going to continue to be champion for a while. Gender is going to eat up, continue to eat up the Indian market because they're exactly. making millions of views. That's what I'm saying. Going right now, to an international market. Right now, he's selling for them. Yes, he he is selling the fuck out of the network, out of everything. Because that's over there. That's really their best way to access all this stuff is through the network. Yeah. I'm sure they get Raw and SmackDown and shit on cable and whatnot, but like, it's probably way tougher for them to to see pay per views. Yes. Shit. Without getting the network, now that made it way easier for them, and it's probably they probably their numbers have probably been jumping already. Oh yeah, because of that, one hundred percent. That's why they gave him the push in the and first. Great, that's why they brought Great Kali in because Great Kali has a school over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, they see Great and Kali. now Great Kali goes back over there and to talk about it. Everybody's like, "Fuck yeah, WWE!" And they're all watching. <laughs> yeah, again. exactly. So Jinder exactly. Mahal, purely for political reasons. Yes, that and I want Shinsuke. I love Shinsuke, but I want him to have an awesome like arc you know yeah. what i mean like next year like as much as i loved seeing aj styles become the champ pretty fucking quick it makes a lot more sense for him too because he's a veteran at this yes. point not that shinsuke isn't but aj styles is i've liked that guy f- since he nobody knew who the fuck he was like when i would watch old dvds and stuff and he was on him but like um of like ring of honor shows and like weird like indie promotions and stuff looking at videos anyway <laughs> he he deserved it more because he came in there already being a huge fucking name. Most people didn't know who Shinsuke Nakamura was, yeah. and he's he's got to make his way. He's he got to make him because he's got to make himself a name. He does, and it's going to be a great match. And I want him to have a, an epic career. And I don't think him being on top right from the rip is going to do that. Yeah, look at I mean, look what compared to Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar, they didn't let Braun Strowman take it from the top. Even though he built his way up over this year, yeah. Brock still beat him. Which I thought Braun Strowman was going to win. So did I. But that might be what happens here. You think Shinsuke is going to win, and then Jinder pulls out one of his little hat tricks. For fucking. Well, that's exactly what Mr. I think. Mr. Mahal is just disappears and comes behind Shinsuke and all, automatically gets his claw. Shinsuke is going to have it. He's. This is what I think is going to happen. He's going to have it in the bag, and somebody's going to f- fuck it up for him. Like, yeah. Either it's the Singh brothers or Jinder Mahal pulls a Jinder Mahal move. Or both, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's he's gonna have it at least one time, and he's gonna get fucked over. Yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura, correct. And then that way Shinsuke can go on and fight AJ Styles. So we both got gender on this one. Both got gender on this one. Alrighty, we both hinder the gender. Hinder the gender. Hinder the gender. Racist. Was it <laughs> like, what I said? Like, <laughs> the way um, I said it. This match is cool. And last but not least. Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens, Hell in a Cell, Falls Count Anywhere. Now, what's cool about this match, all right, there was a simulation for 2K18 for this match already, all right? Okay. So they go back and forth, they go back and forth, fight and fight and fight. They finally get on top of the Hell in a Cell, all right? Kevin Owens picks up Shane McMahon, and he walks him over with that new walk simulation, right? He's holding him. That new and he walk throws simulation. him off the top of the cell. Shane McMahon splatters through the announce table and instantly gets back up. 
instantly stands right back up. And what? the video editor puts in, nope. As you need, I'm going to show you this video at some point in time. But he stands up and it's just like, nope. And he starts climbing the cage and then just go back at it again. Wow. Yeah, dude. It was insane. So but, that's what you think is going to happen? Yeah. I, <laughs> I think exactly. he's going to fall. Like, that is so crazy and weird in the game that you're like it must be what's gonna yeah, happen and jr is gonna be like son of a bitch son of a bitch son of a bitch. even though he's not in the game or there <laughs> i'm just gonna hear it oh um, correct sir but yeah this is an interesting match because this is a built-up feud they've had vince mcmahon involved in this yeah they've had um this has been months and months of build between shame Mc- kevin owens feeling like he's been getting screwed by shane mcmahon and the whole political behind his Face of America character. Yeah. Which is a good character for him. He's an asshole. I mean, after he destroyed Jericho, like he destroyed Sami Zayn in NXT and recently on SmackDown after they had that little fight. Which reminds me, what the fuck happened to Jericho? He popped I know. up one episode. Yeah, like, right. Just because he was, happened to be in the same town or something. Yeah, I feel like Jericho they just were like, they called him on his cell phone and they were like, hey, Jericho, you want to fight tonight? And he's like, oh, he didn't fuck, even He right. didn't even fight. He just like popped in and said some shit and then that's you didn't see no more. Okay, like I thought you were I talking remember. about the one pay-per-view that he showed up on for like the title. It was like a triple threat match for the United States title when Kevin Owens had it. But uh, I, the only, I don't understand this whole feud really. I mean, I get what, I've been following it, so I yeah. understand why it's all happening, but I don't understand the business behind it. Like, who's who's supposed to benefit from this, Shane or Kevin? That's how, the way I'm thinking about it. Kev- I think Kevin's supposed to. Well, Kevin Owens benefits in it as in... He, but at the same time, he's the heel in this. Well, that's what I think. He benefits in multiple ways. He benefits because it's probably the most one of the more interesting if not the most interesting storyline going on right oh, now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, mostly because of all the the kayfabe that's involved. Yes. You know what I mean? Um with the rumors that this man doesn't like Kevin Owens cuz he's fat and everybody calling Kevin Owens fat and just man coming out there and be like, "Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately?" and like yeah. them playing off of that that Vince McMahon legitimately hates him and that Shane McMahon's going to whoop his ass at Hell in the Cell. Yeah, yeah. Vince McMahon, like, took a... You even talked about it on your Facebook. Took a nasty headbutt yeah. from Kevin Owens at that point. He's fucking 72 years old or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But I think Shane doesn't need a push. No. Shane is already at legendary status. He's been getting a pop since he got back. Yeah, I mean, Shane gets nothing but pops. You know what I mean? He loves those pop toys, those little Funko pop toys. Yeah. No, kidding. The little bobblehead zombie ones? <laughs> well, I'll leave by the way. All of them. <laughs> but uh, there's even WWE ones. Yeah, there is. But so this is this whole storyline is meant to get heat on Kevin Owens. Good heat. Like to put Kevin Owens over even more as a heel, I think. So I, I'm going to say Kevin Owens. Okay. Not only that, but have you been watching lately? Kevin Owens has been doing nothing but pretty much just beat the shit out of Shane. Yeah. The last time you saw them fight on SmackDown, he just Didn't he put him stumbled a around truck or something? Like, like a food cart or something. Barely like that did anything. I forget what it was. Or no, it they was uh they fought to the outside. Like in the the arena outside yeah. and he put Shane through the merch table. Ah, uh, the merch table. Okay. And I then thought I think, it was something. I think he something else happened like outside the ring too. Maybe they put him through the announcer table or something. Oh but. damn. Can't quite remember, but Hail. I think Kevin Owens is going to win because this is all meant to benefit Kevin Owens. So I do I. I believe Kevin Owens is going to win in this, and I believe this is going. This is like a reverse corporate versus good guy role. Well, like this is the reversal when Triple H fought Daniel Bryan. Okay, see, I was going to go. This to me, this is when I was watching this story. As I've been watching this storyline unfold, I feel like it's very much a Stone Cold Steve Austin, Vince McMahon. Deal. Okay, I agree with that. But then, but again, in reverse, yes, in reverse, because Vince McMahon was the bad guy. Yeah, and now shame. And I see Kevin Owens as being that Stone Cold esque mm-hmm. character. He's not. He's in the between of good and bad. Well, the thing was with that Stone Cold Vince McMahon thing, that classic feud, probably one of the, if not the greatest feud of all time, uh, is just. How believable you! I truly felt as a fucking oh yeah, preteen teenage kid fucking watching wrestling that this mo- these motherfuckers hate each other. Like, <laughs> right. why does Stone Cold still have a job? Like, right, like when he went in with the bedpan. Like these they- contracts must be iron fucking clad. Like, <laughs> <coughs> but 
Uh, I love it. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking. I mean, obviously, it's it's all about the superstar on this one. It is. It has to be. Shane McMahon doesn't. He's... Shane McMahon's going to get his big Hell in the Cell pop. What's going to happen is Shane McMahon's going to do the elbow drop off the top onto the announce table. He may hit it. Shane McMahon's the Hell in the Cell guy. Yeah, he other is. Other than the Undertaker, he is the other Hell in a Cell And guy. that's another thing that happened in the game that could actually happen in this. Kevin Owens did the coast to coast inside the Hell in the Cell. Oh. He got up from one side of the ring and kicked him on the other side of the ring, straight into Shane McMahon's chest. Uh, I can see that happening. Yeah, yeah. And that being the end. And that was the end of the game. That was the end of the match in the game as he did the coast to coast and finally Owens, beat him. Kevin, Kevin Owens loves to just fucking rub your face in that yep, shit, too. Yep, he does. All right. Well, so I got Kevin Owens. You have, I have Kevin Owens. We're both Kevin Owens on this one. Uh, that is that is our predictions for the uh, WWE SmackDown pay-per-view Hell in a Cell for 2017. Now, should we... Since we're keeping count of who thinks what and what, should we do a follow-up video in which the loser, there's some sort of See, I thought about that. Like punishment or something? There being some or kind of punishment? Stipu- like you have to maybe, maybe not even a punishment, just like now you have to fucking like bring beer for the next three episodes or something, or I have to bring provide alcohol. Or, you know what I mean? Okay. Um... Okay. I, or at least, okay, we'll do we'll start small on this yeah, one. Like, something... Loser loser has to buy a twelve of the winner's desired beer. Beer or liquor. Okay. We'll a bottle beer. or beer of equivalent price. Of equivalent price. So yeah. so like a ten ten to twenty dollar probably $10 bottle. Variation, yes. Or like I agree with that. A twelve pack of like a probably like fifteen to and twenty. And this is gonna go down beer. and this will go down Sunday, so this video will be out tomorrow at some point in time before the pay per view. So Monday, even if we don't get together by Monday, maybe I'll send you a video of me either doing my victory pose or my disappointed <laughs> pose and you can collab them together or something. Gotcha. And we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll you, figure you something guys out. Will, you guys will know. But uh I think in in case if there's a tie, if there's a tie, we just go halfsies. Okay, I agree with that. And uh, well, and we can continue to do this. We'll build up better things later on. Like, oh yeah, the, well, we'll make this a thing. The like, winner will wear next a dress prediction or video. Like, yeah. it'll be. Well, I don't know if I want to go that far with it <laughs> because that took a lot. Of, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah, but uh, yes, it'll become a. Prog- we'll progressively do more with it. But uh, that was the prediction video for Hell in a Cell 2017 pay per view. Yeah, I hope you like that. Yeah, I look forward to. I guess a follow up video to. Uh, I'm sure you'll figure it out if you watch this beforehand. Gonna uh, get wasted. Who the winner is, and to see see what happens. But, and that, that's actually gonna be a funny episode because that'll be a drunk because the person will have to drink that while they're doing the next episode. Well, yeah, we both will. That's what I'm saying. Like the winner and loser will have to drink it by the end, whatever it is—a beer, twelve pack, or a bottle. Gotcha. Because twenty bucks is a lot, man. You can get like a fucking. Case I'm sure we'll of go beer, all over like... this in the follow up video. Yeah, but, uh... yeah, you can get a case of beer for that, but. That was the Bunch of Potheads uh, prediction video with Jesse and Mark. Yeah. Hell in a Cell 2017. Look forward to the next video. Till next time.